What's up, y'all? Nefertiti the Corny Rainbow, and today I have a sew along for you guys. I'm gonna be sewing up my new fall Nomi pattern 2006. It's a double breasted tuxedo dress, and I can't wait to rock this pattern all fall and winter. What I love about my pattern is that you can wear it so many different ways. You can wear it as a jacket, really casual with some tennis shoes, or you can dress it up with some pumps and boots. It's really fun and versatile and I hope that you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. So for this sew along, I'm gonna be doing view A and I'm going to use the shorter length on view B. So if you turn your pattern over to the back, you can see some suggested fabrics that you can use. For today's sew along, I'm going to be using a denim fabric that has a nice weight to it. Some optional things that you could do with this pattern is to add a single fold bias binding to all of your inseams. If you choose not to do that, you can always just serge your raw edges. You're also gonna need six five eighths of an inch buttons and interfacing. This pattern does not call for a lining, so you don't have to worry about that. But if that's something that you would like to add to the pattern, you can feel free to do so. The pattern pieces that you're gonna need for today's sew along are pattern piece number seven, which is the upper collar. You're gonna cut one on the fold of fabric and also of interfacing. Pattern piece number eight, which is your under collar, and you're gonna cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number three, which is the side front, and you're gonna cut two of fabric. Pattern piece number four, we're gonna cut two of fabric. This is your side back. Pattern piece number six, you're gonna cut four of fabric. This is your pocket. Pattern piece number one, for all views, you're gonna cut two of fabric. If you are cutting view B, you would lengthen or shorten at the lengthen or shorten line here, and it does also say cut here for view B. Pattern piece number two, this is your back. You're gonna cut one on the fold. If you're cutting view B, you're going to shorten the pattern as well. Pattern piece number five, this is your skirt front and back. You're going to need to cut four of this pattern piece. Pattern piece number 10, this is your sleeve. You're gonna cut two of fabric. And lastly, pattern piece number nine, this is your front facing for all views. You're gonna need to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. If you're sewing view B, you wanna make sure to shorten your pattern as well. Go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces. Make sure you transfer all your markings, your buttonholes, and your dots and notches, and meet me back here. All right, y'all, so to get started, you're gonna wanna make sure that you stay stitch the side edges of pattern piece number one, which is your front piece, and pattern piece number two, which is your back piece. So as you can see here, I've stay stitched the neck edge and the side edge to your dot. For pattern piece number two, you're gonna stay stitch the side edges and also the neck edge. After you have stay stitched pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two, you're gonna pull out pattern piece number three and four and you're gonna attach at the side seams. So let's go ahead and pin that. All right, you're gonna do that for both pieces. Head on over to the machine and come back. All right, so I went ahead and added bias binding to the seam allowance on the side front and the side back. This is optional and you can also choose to serge your raw edges instead of using the bias binding. After you've done that, we're gonna put this one to the side and we're gonna work on our skirt. All right, so next you're gonna grab pattern piece number five and pattern piece number six, which is your skirt front and back and your pockets. We're going to sew one pocket to the front of the skirt and one pocket to the back of the skirt at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. All right, you should have all four skirt front and back pattern pieces 
with your pockets pinned, we're gonna go ahead and stitch one fourth of an inch seam allowance and meet me back here. All right, once you've sewn your pockets on, you're gonna go ahead and give them a nice press towards the pocket. Then we're gonna close this pocket off by stitching in between the first dot here, leaving an opening in between the two dots and then picking back up on the next dot all the way down to the end of the skirt. And then we're gonna close the pocket off. All right, you're gonna do that for both skirt pieces. Let's head to the machine and stitch everything down. So first we're gonna stitch from the first dot and then we're gonna stop. We're gonna move to our next dot and we're gonna stitch five eighths of an inch. All right, so at this point, if you are doing bias binding, you're gonna wanna go ahead and add your bias binding to your seam allowance for your pocket. I'm going to go ahead and trim. And you can add your bias binding to both edges here and around your pocket, or you can go ahead and serge your raw edges. All right, now we're going to do our widest stitch and we're gonna go ahead and do our gathering stitches on the top edge of the skirt front and back. I'm gonna stitch the first row at about three eighths of an inch. And I'm not gonna back stitch here. And we're gonna add our second row of stitching. Then we're gonna flip our pocket and we're gonna start at the next dot. All right, now that you have added your gathering stitches and closed off your pocket and finished your skirt side seams, we're gonna go ahead and gather our top edge. So grab your side front and side back. Now, the way that you can tell which is the front, the front side has one notch and the back side has two notches. We're gonna match up our seams first. Just make sure that your gathering is even. So once you get your gathering where you need it, go ahead and tie it off and finish pinning. So I have everything pinned. There are three dots on the top edge of this gathered skirt. So five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Stop at the pocket. Flip your pocket out of the way, stitch at this next dot, back stitch to this last dot, 
and we're going to backstitch. Then we're going to flip our pocket to the front side of the skirt. So you want to make sure that we're going to base down our pocket to the same side of the side front pattern piece with the single notch. All right. So let's head to the machine, do that and come back. All right, y'all. So if you flip your garment over to the right side, you'll see your seams are matching up really nicely. Your pocket should match up with this side seam for your side front and back pieces. Go ahead, give this a nice press. You're going to press your seam allowance towards the bodice. Everything that we've done here, we're going to do the same exact thing to our other skirt front and back and our side front and back. Do that, come back and we'll move on to the next step. Next, we're going to be working with our front and back piece. We're going to go ahead and attach our front piece and back piece together at the shoulder seams. All right, so I went ahead and pinned the right front and the right back to the side back and the side back skirt and the front side and the front skirt. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sew five eighths of an inch seam allowance until we get to our first dot. We're gonna fold that seam allowance up and we're gonna start at our next dot and stitch down the edge of the skirt. We're going to do the same thing on both sides, starting and stopping at all of our dots. We're going to sew our shoulder seams at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now we're going to sew the front piece to our side front at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. We have come up on our first dot. So we're gonna stitch until we get to that first dot, making sure to not go past. And we're going to back stitch and push that seam forward. Now I'm gonna push this seam up and we're gonna stitch down the rest of the skirt. You can see I pulled this seam out of the way as well and we're gonna start right at that dot. So if we take a closer look at this seam, we have a perfect point right where our dots are meeting. So you're going to do that for your left side. All right. I've given everything a good press. I went ahead and finished all of the remaining bias binding seam allowances. And we're going to go ahead and put this to the side and we're going to move on to our under collar and our collar. So you should have pattern piece number seven, your upper collar and pattern piece number eight, which is your under collar. So for pattern piece number eight, you're going to need to stitch the seams together. And I went ahead and already did that. Make sure that you transfer all of your notches and your pattern markings, your dots. And I went ahead and on pattern piece number seven, your upper collar, I stitched five eighths of an inch on the top edge. You should also have two dots. And I went ahead and trimmed right just above that stay stitch. So we're gonna fold this down five eighths of an inch, and then we're going to trim one fourth of an inch. All right. So you're going to place your upper collar and your under collar together, right sides together. And we're going to stitch from 
the large dot on the side edge to the small dot all the way on the top edge where you have double notches. Match that up, sew it up, come back, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we went ahead and we stitched the under collar at the top edge. Now we're gonna go ahead and trim this down. I also went ahead and understitched everything, the seam allowance down to your under collar here. So as far as you can go, you wanna make sure you understitch there as well. All right, so we're gonna trim our corners, trim everything down, trim off the excess, All right, so now we're gonna turn this right side out. Got my point turner. All right, let's give this a good press and come back. All right, so I gave the collar a good press. Now we're ready to attach the collar to our dress. All right, so now I'm matching up the collar to the neck edge and you should have markings on your collar as well as your seam allowance for your shoulder on your neck. So you're gonna match up the seam allowances first. Make sure your center back is lining up. And you wanna be sure not to stitch this opening that we folded down 5 eighths of an inch, but we are gonna be stitching the remainder of the collar to the neck edge. So match up your notches. And if you need to make any clippings for curves, go ahead and do so. We've already stay stitched the neck edge. There also will be a dot that we're gonna stop at and you should have transferred that marking as well and that will be the edge of your collar. All right, so go ahead and go to your machine. We're gonna stitch this at 5 eighths of an inch and we're basting, leaving this opening here. You're not going to catch your upper collar, but you are going to stitch down your under collar, okay? So you're stitching here, but be sure not to catch this opening, all right? Once you've done that, we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that your collar is attached, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add our front facing. I went ahead and I finished the facing edge. So you wanna make sure that you either serge your edges or finish them off, or you can add the bias binding like I have. So we're gonna match up our notches. Make sure that you're matching all your dots as well. And I'm gonna turn the collar down. You wanna make sure that you're matching up your dot here. You should also have a notch from your neck edge. We're gonna match that notch up as well. Your edge of your front facing should match up with your seam on your shoulder. Also on the shoulder seam, you should have pressed under five eighths of an inch. All right, so we're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side. Go ahead and stitch around your neck edge and on the edge of your front facing and come back. All right, so now that we've stitched the front facing together, we're gonna understitch the front facing, making sure that you're catching your seam allowance on your front facing only. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're under stitching just about three inches below your upper buttonhole marking. So what I've done is I've taken a pin and I've placed it where my upper buttonhole marking is and I'm going to start a little bit below that for my under stitching. Okay. 
want to make sure that your seam allowance is going towards your facing. All right, so we also have to understitch from the corner to, a, to three inches from our notches here. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure three inches from the notches and just put a pin on the side that is interfaced. So for this understitch, we're gonna push our seam allowance towards our front piece. Go as far as we can. So I was able to go about two inches before the corner there. So do that to the other side as well. All right, so now we're gonna trim off our corners and where we understitched, and we're also gonna trim around our neck edge. All right, now that we have everything trimmed, let's go ahead and turn our corners out. All right, with right sides together, we're gonna stitch our facing to our front piece at our edge here at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that on both sides and come back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the excess. All right, now you're gonna turn your corners out. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is slip stitch this pressed edge of our collar over the next seam. And then we're going to hand tag this facing over our shoulder seam and give everything a good press. Come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, y'all, so I've given this a really good press and we're gonna move on to your sleeves. If you're doing view B, you can go ahead and attach your bias binding with right sides together and you can follow the pattern instructions for that portion. Next, we're gonna be working on our sleeve. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and ease stitch around the top edge of your sleeve. I've already done so. We're gonna pin and sew five eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so you're gonna take both of your sleeves to the machine and sew five eighths of an inch seam allowance for both and go ahead and hem your sleeves. All right, so I went ahead and finished up my sleeve. All right, with these gathering stitches, we're gonna go ahead and form our sleeve. All right, once you start to get that shape there. Um, we're going to go ahead and attach our sleeve to our dress. So with right sides together, we're going to match our sleeves up. You should have three dots. So one at the shoulder seam and then two on the side. You want to make sure that you match those up as well. Go ahead and stitch your armhole at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then you're going to go and stitch one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, you guys, we are all done. The only thing you have to do is add your buttons and your buttonholes, hem your bottom, and give everything a good press. All right, y'all, you have completed my fall tuxedo dress, Nomi 2006. I hope you enjoyed this sew along. Please be sure and tag at Nomi Patterns with all of your makes and also at The Corny Rainbow and at Mimi G Style. Until next time, peace.